that the that the radio was not even invented until the 1920s. We're not even a hundred years from the radio being invented. We're barely over a hundred years of airplane being invented. And we've got rockets going out, showing us pictures supposedly of something that happened 5 billion years ago. And we can't get along with each other and can't <laughs> bang <laughs> each other. <laughs> That's a cool point. Yeah. There's something missing. This And what's coming to my mind recently, it keeps coming to me, is understanding universal principles changes everything. It always has, and it always will. But this is the one area that hasn't, at least one of the areas, that hasn't found those before Sid came along. It's not, you know, my, my wife is reading a Synchronicity, which I'm going to read again. She's reading a book now called Presence. There are people, Sid said it, there are people everywhere. The truth is everywhere. It's just that he was able to see this in a package and a clarity with the see the principles behind it, that it's the missing piece. But, but, Principles changed physics. They changed thermodynamics. They changed laws of motion. They changed when they saw circulation. People did not understand until about 300 years ago how the body's circulation worked, that it got oxygenated in the lungs, went to the heart, went out to the body, got oxygen got used up, went through little capillaries, came back through the veins, got into the lungs, got oxygen back, got over to the heart, and, and this has happened 70 to 90 times a minute for everybody until we die. Nobody understood that. So the things they used to do, once they understood the principles, made no sense, a great percentage of them. It's been true in everything. In surgery, before they understood the principles of, of bacteria, they used to sharpen their scalpel on the heel, on the steel, on the bottom of their boot before they cut into the person's stomach and then wondered why they died. It was innocent. They did not know better. It's true. Psychological innocence is true. It's truth. It's not easy for us sometimes to accept it for ourselves or others, but it's true. Beating yourself up will not make it easier for you not to use drugs or alcohol. <laughs> it'll, it'll create a level of tension that you'll go to what you did before to relieve tension. Being angry at something that somebody did 20 years ago will do nothing except who in your life today. Seeing psychological innocence is not a should, but it's vital to living in peace. Sid says, Release, forgiveness releases you from mental anguish and pain and all the horrible negative feelings and unforgiving mind experiences. It's not a should, but it is vital to keep looking in that direction. And here's the key, folks. In my experience of almost 50 years as a physician and 34 years from teaching from the principles, if a person gets clear that they want to have psycholog see psychological innocence for themselves or others, but they, they say, I just can't forgive myself or I just can't forgive that SOB, I can't. If they see that it's in their, even their best interest to do that, and they really want it because they want to have a heart full of love and lightheartedness rather than one of pain and, and stress, if they see that clearly, I tell people, if you get clear that that's what you want, you will make space for that to come through you. And it is in the cards for you to wake up some morning with a smile on your face and you've gotten out of prison like I did after many years of anger 
and guilt and anger, waking up to a, a day where the prison bars, and you realize the prison bars never had a, they were unlocked all the time. And you're free to walk through them. And that's what seeing what psychological innocence does. The prison bars fall away. Wow. 